Guy Wallace Schmeichel, Partner Manager for Dell Technologies here in Winnipeg. I'm with Powerland here in their Winnipeg head office and we're going to unpack their brand new PowerScale F200 storage array. Before we get to that, a couple of points. For 2020, Gartner has once again named Dell Technologies in the Leaders Quadrant for Distributed File Systems and Object Storage. We're bringing the number one scale-out file system on the number one server platform to provide the world's most complete scale-out file system. PowerScale is designed for organizations that want to manage their data, just not their storage. Our storage systems are powerful yet simple to install and manage to virtually any size. Now, over to my friends at PowerLine. Hi, my name is Mike Leimer here at PowerLine. And what I have here in the box, still sealed, is a PowerScale F200. I'd like to open that up today, show you what it looks like and how things go together. Now normally this will all go in a rack and it comes with everything you need to rack it up. But I'm just going to show you on the table here today to make it easier for you to see everything. So I've got one of the F200 nodes ready to go. I'm going to get that open. Okay, we got the rails here for the rack. There's a cable management arm and some documentation. And a bit of an accessories box. We got a locking front panel, power cords, and some more documentation. Now we're left with just the note itself. There we have a F200 node. The series right now is F200 and F600. The F200 has single socket, the F600 is dual socket. There's also more RAM options available for higher capacity in the F600. And there's also a 100 gig network option that's not available in the 200. The other difference, of course, you can see across the front, the hard drive. So in the F200, we got four drives. The F600 actually has the smaller two and a half inch drives and it can accommodate up to eight. The F600, the drives are NVMe connected. In this one, they are SAS SSDs. So let's take a look at the front. Over on the far, far side, far left here for you is the uh, status indicator. Then we have the four drive bays here. We've also got VGA and some USB ports and the iDRAC connection, along with the power button tucked right up in the, the right ear here. Uh, the drives, as I mentioned, are the three and a half inch. And this particular model here, I have 1.92 terabyte disks. So about just under eight terabytes capacity in a single node. The configurations start at three node for one cluster. So I'm gonna go ahead and unbox the other two and get them up on the table here. Let me show you the back before I do that. Okay, around back we got dual redundant power supplies. And then there's a total of four network ports. And you can see two on the far side here, they're 25 gig, they will connect at 10 as well. They're dedicated for the back end network connections. So in one of these clusters, there is network switches that come with the solution. There's a couple models to choose from those switches and they connect to these two ports and no other devices connect to that. So that's just node to node communications. The network ports that connect to your network infrastructure down here, this one again has 25 gig and they will connect to 10 as well. And on the back, just to finish up, we got VGA, serial, the iDRAC connection, and some LED indicators. So I'll go ahead and get the other two nodes out. All right, so here's our three nodes, the minimum config for 
a power scale cluster. So what we need next is those switches I was talking about for the back end networking. So I've got those over here, I'll get those open. Okay, so we got uh, documentation is one of the switches. left in the box we got serial console cable as well as USB console cable and I'll open up the second one Alright, so there we have the two back end switches in this configuration. There are other switches available. You can see they're half width and it does come with a tray to mount both side by side in a rack. So the two put, put together will take one U of rack space. These are the S4112 switches. They have 12 SFP plus ports as long as three QSFPs as well as your console and dual power. So we'll get this cabled up to the back end now, so let me go ahead and open up the cables. All right, so port one over on this side, I'll plug all the port ones into this switch. And then I'll come back and do port Two, and the switch closer to me here. That's for two. this switch. I'm simply going to repeat that across all three notes. Okay, now node two. Let's take port one here. I'll just use the next port. This same switch that I used port one in the bottom node. Okay, and the last node here. There's the three nodes connected on that side. Let's just finish up the other side. Connection. There we go, that's the back end networking. Often the nodes will be at the bottom of a rack, switches higher up or at the top of the rack. 
and then you can continue to expand your nodes, continuing connections into these switches. So all that would be left at this point now, you would connect power to everything, connect your IGRAX into your network, and connect your networking infrastructure into, the, into these ports on the devices, on the nodes. Then you power up everything, and when you connect to the first node, you'll actually be presented a menu, and one of them is to create a new cluster. And from there, you start to configure your new power scale solution. So hopefully this gives you a good idea of what it looks like, how it goes together. Thanks for watching.